freezing here I cannot feel my fingertips a few days ago I was in uh, Monkey Maya 900 kilometers north of Perth and I came back on Sunday and I was asked straight away if I wanted to come uh, to Margaret River area and I said yes of course I'm leaving to Europe for two months in two weeks and uh, staying here one week means that when I come back I have four days to clean my room to pack everything I can and then travel again so a change of scenery was definitely needed because I rather prefer to be in a forest with birds and kangaroos than in a beach where you walk for miles and miles and there is nothing and here I just woke up it's 7 a.m. and of course it's freezing look at my hand it's white and uh, I woke up with kookaburras and kangaroos jumping in the field behind me and I live right behind me where there are all the houses with the area for the stuff and in front of me there is the main area with the restaurant and the reception so I'm walking there right now so I can get a map and see where is the lake because I really want to go on the lake and record with drone so I can show you where I just arrived I just realized now that I left the place where I was, the restaurant, where I'm supposed to work tonight and I didn't pay for the coffee because I was so focused on the scenery and filming myself in front of, of, the, of the glass, in front of the lake this place is spectacular by the way, that I forgot to pay look what I just saw This trail I'm on right now, which is going for 50 minutes to come back as well. And uh, it's basically in the middle of nature. I just spotted some birds. It's very muddy because it was raining and it's very cold. If you have a shaved head, most of your heat leaves from the feet and from the head. And now I don't have anything to cover it and I can feel how cold it is in uh, Monkey Maya where I was a few days ago was uh, 7 to 10 degrees more than here and uh, I just found well look at this <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna cross this but um, I'll figure out I guess I have some boots at the moment which are waterproof but there is a limit to what they can take I just tried to go past a very muddy area but I didn't consider that the mud was very deep so my shoes now are covered in mud and I can feel it going through my socks uh, well it was for the purpose of great footage but now I'm paying the price of it the vegetation here is so thick you can't see anything I'm planning on flying the drone but the problem is the trees are very very high so if I eat a branch it will fall in the middle of the vegetation and it will be probably lost forever so I have to be very careful now I love this place because it reminds me home I come from a city called Forlì it's in between Bologna and Rimini middle north of Italy and it's very close to the hills and it's very close to the beach half an hour drive to both and the greatest thing is that uh, there are woods it reminds me of my childhood because uh, with my parents for every summer we were going hiking on very long trails and I remember when I was 11 or 13 
they took me to a trail on top of a mountain that was uh, 43 kilometers long and we did that within a day well 24 hours at least and uh, at the time I was very young but uh, growing up like this he taught me resilience to push when you feel that you want to stop and I was always in contact with nature with the smell of pine woods and uh, evergreen trees and looking at animals recognizing mushrooms which one are edible and which one are poisonous and uh, I can recognize the directions plans as uh, very interesting skills to grow up with and it's funny because there is a resort at the bottom of the valley and it's full of tourists and I've been walking for 20 minutes and I haven't seen anybody here and this place is a treasure look at this nobody here two roads diverge in a wood and I I took the last travel by and that has made all the difference I chose the 45 minutes trail let's see where it takes me I found a gap in between the trees and in this area there is absolutely no one except for wildlife and some birds some animals crawling in the woods but uh, I decided to fly the drone there is no GPS signal and the vegetation is very thick there is no wind at the moment I will try to fly it through the gap and go on top to show you the surrounding because it's mind-blowing here if you love forest you love the footage if I'm gonna lose the drone too bad if you are gonna see the next footage it means that I rescue it and I flew successfully so let's see Can you imagine the feeling of being here, really, just the fact of being here, even if I'm working for a week, is such a gift. I love this place. The sad thing about people, average people, not you, somebody you might know, is that they don't understand trees. When you look at a dog or a cat or any animal, you have compassion and empathy because they have facial expressions, they can make sound, they react to your touch. With tree it doesn't happen as you can see, but they can feel, they remember, they experience, they react, they form communities. If you want any information about this topic, there is a fantastic book that I listened to on Audible. It's called The Hidden Life of Trees. And he says that we know more of the depth of the seas and the space that we know about the ground and he explains how trees communicate 
through mycelium, through mushrooms running underground. They release chemicals when a specific bug bites them. They release it so other trees know that there is this uh, bug attacking the community and predators get attracted to this specific bug. So for every bug they release a chemical and different predators react to different chemicals. They store information, they send nutrients to what they recognize to be their children because the mycelium connect the tree to the seed that falls on the ground so they can communicate and the tree can send nutrients to the child, his child, so he can grow stronger. And uh, people still chop trees like there is no tomorrow. They write on trees. People make fun of uh, spiritual people calling them tree hugger. But they don't understand that trees, they feel each hug you give it to them. So go out there and hug a tree. And if you can, plant, plant some trees. The forest is quiet again. There were some people walking before and they were yelling while talking, very loud. I think that the forest, if you're quiet, it rewards you. Right now, apart from the time when I'm talking to the camera, I'm walking and I can feel birds moving around, dropping in the nearest branch looking at me and then because I'm getting too close the proximity right they fly away again but if you're loud they wouldn't come because they're scared to start with of the noise and uh, here there are no deers no foxes no mooses and other big wild animals but if you are walking in a forest somewhere else I can only imagine that animals would get curious and that's a way to see animals to maintain the silence of the forest. I can finally start hearing the sound of the waterfall, so it's getting closer. You know in video games when you discover a new area and the black turns into different polygons, uh, green and trees and uh, buildings, whatever, like Skyrim or Breath of the Wild, Zelda. Well, I just discovered a new area and you can hear it too. I don't know if the camera will pick the audio because it's very noisy here, but this is what is happening here. There are the waterfalls on my right. It says that five people are allowed because, well, the bridge is very shaky. Look. Ooh. See? Beautiful. I'm not sure where the trail will lead and he also says that it's 50 minutes walk back to the resort but I want to explore more because uh, every corner you turn there is a new surprise there is so much vegetation everything is so thick here there is an observatory over there I can't believe I found a sign for the Bibulman truck the truck is so famous because during war the soldiers were moving from Perth to Albany through the inside, through a truck they created to avoid the bombing on the port of Fremantle or Perth. And is 1,000 kilometers and connects Perth to Albany from the inside. And right now is visited like Santiago de Compostela because it goes on for around three weeks, depending on your pace, of course. But it's very rough. He's in the bush and in uh, swamps and I've seen, I didn't do it personally, it's in my bucket list because it would be fantastic. You see Western Australia in the roughest way, in the most natural way possible. But I have contacts from my Instagram that have been doing it and they went away with a lot of resources because when you're there you have to be prepared with a tent, with boots, raincoats, Medi medicines in case you get stung by different things that you can encounter during the truck and you have to understand that temperatures wings like crazy if you go in summer it's too hot 
if you go in winter it's quite cold and it rains as well uh, wow I can actually leave now and go to the bottom of Western Australia by walking fantastic that would be an experience a story to tell for the rest of your life the things you see in this forest are incredible and the air feels so fresh you can feel the humidity in the air you know the forest preserve all the water really you have to come here to feel it something that I cannot explain through a camera I chose the longest way to go back home to the resort without having any clue where it will lead me of course and now I can see that this is definitely the unbeaten truck yeah this way goes to the resort and this way goes to the falls so looks like I ended up in the wrong side of the lake This thing is so cute. You are walking out of a forest, done. This thing here, a little bit less. Right now it's uh, 12 o'clock, I woke up at 5.30, I got to the restaurant at 7.30 and I went to the hike around 8. I'm cooked, I have to work tonight from 4 to 9. I will probably take a nap. And right now I'm walking back to the restaurant because when I was there before, I walked out and I forgot to pay for the coffee, so not a great start for the first day. And after that I'm going home, uploading the content and start the editing. And I seen a platform in the middle of the water, it's right there. And in the next days I want to jump in the water and make a vlog sitting on top of it. Somebody just stopped with the car as they saw me and they told me there are kangaroos on the side of the road. I'm going back home and this is such a good way to end a video showing you a little bit of wilderness some bathing in the sun I can see them it's a whole family I've been uh, walking around for five hours right now and I still feel that I've been scraping the surface because there are so many trucks to hike and so many things to explore so many activities to do since I'm a kayak on the river so I'm gonna definitely rent one one of these days and trying to jump in the water as well explore a little bit more trucks and hike a bit more in the forest but uh, this one is a is a wrap I'd say if you have the opportunity and you are in Perth and you want to get lost in nature a little bit this place is fantastic Carri Valley and they have resorts right on the lake so you wake up in the morning you open your window you look down and there is the lake fantastic and it's very quiet I go to sleep at night with cicadas I look uh, up and I see a starry sky and in the morning around 5 5 30 I wake up with kookaburras making the weird sound the laugh so it's a uh, it's a good place to recharge before I go to Europe. You'll see more in the next days, but for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, let me know. Put a like, put a comment. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.